Tonight on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Floats. I just think it's interesting that we're drawing lines of some nature on this show. We do have our standards. Who's going to stop you? The question is not who will let you, but who will stop you. All your favorite Disney princesses are here. Jasmine, Ariel, <laughs> Tiana. I mean, are, are we speaking to the dystopian future upon the horizon? IFAF. Idaho Falls Local, Independent, Alternative, Media, with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Welcome, new followers. Hit that like button or the star, or whatever, subscribe you have to do to let the algorithm know you're into Idaho Falls infotainment, opinion, and bad jokes. The worst jokes. We are <laughs> on one tonight. I don't know mm -hmm. what you're going to hear tonight. Um, okay, we're going to talk about crime in Idaho Falls and surrounding area. Is there a sewage spill secret you need to know mm. about? Just a theory of ours. Loud booms, what do they mean? Walmart redneck ornaments that I think are kind of cool. I don't, I don't hate them. Jiffy Lube and Pocatello, great marketing. Mm -hmm. And the secret to growing a really big pumpkin that you might not want to hear. Mm. All right, let's start the show with uh, this motivational speech. Good morning, everyone. Before we get started today, I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping items. In a hundred years, I'll be dead. And you'll be dead, and all memory of us will be gone. Nobody is going to care about or remember anything that we're talking about today. So while it probably feels like this is all very important, life or death sort of stuff, it's really, really not. Let's get going. Let's get going. There. <laughs> all right. It's a great note to start on. Now, that being said, <laughs> I think that that was much more accurate back before think things could be recorded on film. Sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but the new way of things since mm -hmm. YouTube in 08 and I don't know what, a billion hours are uploaded a day. I'm sure that's an exaggeration. <laughs> right, right. But now that so much is being uploaded on a daily basis, you know, things are going to get lost. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I've got plenty of things I don't want anyone to see. <laughs> Hopefully tonight's show will be among them. Yeah. It, it reminds me of the stoic expression, memento mori, mm. which is Latin for remember you're going to die. Yeah. I think technically remember you have to die. Remember your mortality. Right. Yeah. And that sounds like as we head into spooky season, that mm -hmm. sounds sort of like a morbid expression, but really it's an inspirational expression. It's yeah. used a lot in early Christianity and antiquity. Uh, to remind us to do with the time that we have what mm -hmm. we need to do. Right. You know, I actually sort of live on that same uh, thought process of, man, someday this will all be over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I'm glad it's happening now. I want it to happen. I'm excited to spend the energy, but also sometimes things are hard and I want to know that eventually it'll end. <laughs> Whenever I'm about to go on stage, uh, and I, I have been a few times in my life, I think in an hour, this will all be over. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do in that hour? Right. Let's give it all I got. Yeah. And it also reminds me of another Latin phrase, amor fatty. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to pronounce Latin amor fati. Mm-hmm. Armor fatty, uh, which basically means love the fate. Right. So instead of going, yeah, okay, this is happening. Please, fate, just steamroll over me and it'll all be over. Go, I love this. I love that this is happening. Right. And we're just going to do it. Enjoy the hand that fate has dealt you. Yeah. Yeah. And live in the moment and mm -hmm. do with it what you can. One might even say YOLO. Yes. <laughs> YOLO. Yeah. You only live once. Yeah. Thanks, Drake. Um, or I am a golden god as you jump <laughs> off of a roof into a pool. Or throw a TV into the pool. Yes, of a the hotel. The hotel pool, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Who was it? Some member of Led Zeppelin, Robert Plant. 
We don't need we don't need to name names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've actually stayed in that hotel a uh, twice. <laughs> oh wow, a uh, twice? Yeah. Not a uh, once? It's on the Sunset Not a thrice, Strip. Just a twice. <laughs> I stayed at it in the early 2000s when it was still owned but well little little Richard occupied the the whole top floor. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, wow. And then it changed hands and I stayed in it again. It's got a nice Which seems rooftop excessive. pool and Yo, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like yeah, how do you yeah. need a whole floor? Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, kind of. <laughs> like, but that's I'm, what rock stars do. Okay, but also, how cool would it be to be a rock star, have the entire floor except one room, mm-hmm. and just let that sort of be the hands of fate that, like, you <laughs> yeah. know. Your armor fatty room. Yeah, yeah, and that's, like, that's who you're hanging out with for the weekend. You know, maybe it's family of three. Maybe it's yeah. some random bachelor. Maybe uh-huh. it's some uh, bachelorette party. Somebody you who know? wants to that party. That sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or a couple rooms. Even as we <laughs> speak, even as we record this episode, number 61. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, the Emotion Bowl I'll is- I'll be more excited at 69. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I think that's actually going to be our Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> oh. So we'll talk all about- Eating. Yeah. Anyway. Appropriately. Even as we speak, uh, Skyline is beating the pants off of Idaho Falls High School in the Emotion Bowl. Well, I mean, Idaho Falls High School doesn't even have hallways that have full-on roofs. Right. Yeah. Their ceilings are collapsing. I mean, can you blame them for not being at their, like, (laughs) top fighting form this Um, season? The current score is 40 to 0 in the third quarter. Again, Pathetic. If they don't even have full-on hallways, of course they aren't ready to like train the way that they should. Well, maybe in this new Frontier Fields on 49th South is going to, I don't know. Well, and also it's not even connected to the school. The kids can't even Give walk there. IFHS a fighting chance, right? Well, yeah. Skyline doesn't even, do they have a football field? Do they have yeah. a practice field? Anyway. I, I, I think, I don't know. I don't play, I don't play the footballs. <laughs> Hillcrest has a brand new exciting Never field. Never shit. <laughs> we really need to take a video of that for all of our expats. Especially when it's like really lit up, like yes. during game night. Uh-huh. Because my goodness, the houses around it must be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was a topic on one of the boards not too long ago, or pages or whatever, not too long ago, was are football games too loud? Right. And, and we were just at your place the other night. Uh-huh. And, I, and the window was <laughs> open because it was a nice, cool... Yeah. Almost early, fall night, late, late summer, summer, almost early, fall. Yeah, <laughs> and and it was. I, I kind of liked it. I, oh, I yeah. sort of felt in touch with the community. Me too. Me too. But you could definitely hear all of the cheering. Yeah, and some of the and announcer going. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> yeah, it sort of sounded like a Charlie Brown mm-hmm. movie. You know, yeah, like a Peanuts parent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I know I spent uh, one summer night. Sort of uh, by Kate Curley Park, and oh. I went outside. It was a grill party or whatever, mm-hmm. and you could really feel the city yeah. all around you. You know, with traffic and Which noises. Which is so and impressive smells. with all of those trees there to block out the sound. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I had to let there was a there was a radio station like 15 years ago in Idaho Falls called The Beat of East Idaho. Wow. And, and well, how many years ago? 15 probably. Oh, so before there was actually a beat. Cool. Yes, before there was a beat. <laughs> it would yeah. I mean, they should when have the just played was... the flat line doot sound. The, yeah. I don't know if that's a 1 kilohertz tone or whatever it is, <laughs> right. but But yeah, now the town has a little bit of a beat and I don't I don't mind the sound of football. Yeah, Even I though, think it's fun. Yeah, I'm not a if sports If you're far enough person. away. If right. you're right there, you'd hate it. If you're within a five-block <laughs> radius, I imagine the lights and the sound might get annoying. And the traffic? I'd say one block. Yeah. After that, like, it kind that of just happens. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Some comments and follow-ups? I noticed in our shows now, we're sort of drawing a line naturally. And I thought, you know, at some point we're going to have to draw the line of what content is acceptable and what content is not. Mm-hmm. I uh, After we featured the good to go billboard that said, you know, take a dump, oh. which is just like, it's not some that's not a message I want to see on a billboard. Well, but also they chose to put it on a billboard. So how mad can it be? Right. But where's the billboard police? Right. I mean, I yeah. guess it's the general public. It's us. It's pundits like us. <laughs> right. But I remember we did feature, and we made them IFAF 
a year ago or so. Advanced Home Services, when they did the poop emoji happens billboard, right. uh-huh. that was cute. Yeah. But for some reason, take a dump is not, even if they write in an RV. Yeah, but- In between. It's weird. And then I realized, okay, we're the kind of show that will talk about a dead raccoon on the side of the road. Right. That some BYU-Idaho student or Rigby Trojan with a sense of humor tied a get well soon Mylar balloon to. Right. But we won't show it. Uh Uh-huh. So I I just think it's interesting that we're drawing lines of some nature on this show. We do have our standards and principles. The fact (laughs) of the matter is, they made an emoji- Mm-hmm. versus they did not make an emoji. Well, and who doesn't like the poo you know? emoji? Right. I mean, they had pillows literally in Walmart that were the poop emoji with its little stupid smile yeah. that I hated. I've always hated the poop <laughs> emoji. I think it's have stupid. You? Yes. I'm just glad that it's smiling. I, I had a friend um, mm. refer to that act as punching a grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. He's the same guy as Nuts to Butts. Wow. Uh, oh. Is he a poet? He has a way with words. <laughs> yes, I, maybe is he is. Is he the new Robert Frost? He might be. I mean, I'm just saying, I think that he might have a better uh, handle on the English language than like most people. He would strike mm-hmm. me if he had to go in the woods, he would poop on the road less traveled. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He would there. stop by the woods on a snowy evening, or what's that? <laughs> no, but any oh, the East Idaho version of nuts to butts. Uh, <laughs> I I saw on a page the other day guts to butts. So that's how we would say it here. Oh, it was guts to butts. I mean, that just that sounds even closer. That's like you already <laughs> doing it. That that sounds like there's a height difference. <laughs> um, if your gut is on their butt. Oh yeah. Oh. You're just a little shorty, a little shorty poo. <laughs> Where was I going with that? See, I was thinking like guts to butts in the sense that like you're in the guts. Oh, right. Oh, well. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. No, you're thinking of P. Diddy and the thousand gallons of baby oil. Oh, a uh, thousand bottles? That, yeah, I don't know. Were they gallon how, bottles? <laughs> how big of bottles were they, Mike? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a... <laughs> a, a gallon of baby oil in my life. At no point in my life did I have more than two bottles of baby oil in my home. And I've never had a baby. Right. Right. It's real good for taking off makeup, especially waterproof makeup. Therefore, I had my usual and my backup. But I can't imagine having 1,000 of them. Especially because realistically, that scent, not great. Well, and let's face it, it's not the best lube. No. Okay, here we are just segueing. It's perfect. Mm. Um, obviously, we're talking about P. Diddy and the raid that happened at his home. The fact that they found a thousand bottles, a thousand gallons, whatever it was, of baby oil. Um, have you never heard of, um, what's it called? Uh, and who's the company? I think the company is Pure, P-J-U-R. I've heard that the Pure... Eros brand Mm -hmm. is the good stuff. It's like 50 bucks for an eight ounce bottle. Wow. Boy, you know where that went. That's a lot. But um, also- I've just heard. If we're talking about lube, I'm sorry. Have you never heard of some (laughs) WD-40? It works on literally everything. And it's got that like weird little red hose that like can spray on so precisely. You can get up anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Hank Hill. Why are you not using that (laughs) on anything you need? Do you tell me what? <laughs> We've been watching lots of King of the Hill lately. <laughs> but baby oil, that's so basic. You would think a rock star like P. Diddy. Well, and also I mean, if you're going to good. coerce people. Allegedly. By getting them to do unspeakable acts on video, at least, at least be a gentleman. You know, provide them some good lube. And also, I hate powder fresh scent, mm. which is what baby oil tends to tends to smell like you don't want to be thinking about babies yeah while you're making one (laughs) ew ew mike (laughs) but this is a great segue to way to go pocatello jiffy lube for this sign there it is live laugh lube (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I love that they're keeping the Karens on their toes. <laughs> True words have never been spoken. Pocatello Jiffy Lube. And that's why 
You are IFAF this week. Chris Pie 5. 21 finger gun salute. <laughs> right from the lube guns. And chef's kiss to you. To you. And I your fine marketing you, department. I hate that you made me do pew pew when you were <laughs> meaning different guns than the guns I was doing. <laughs> so sorry about that. <clears throat> How dare you. Uh, anyway, have you heard Eminem's song Fuel from his album that he re- released yes. in July, The Death of Slim Shady, mm-hmm. Coup de Gras? Yeah. And he says something like, um, R-A-P-E-R, got lots of essays, essays. Wait, he didn't just spell rapper without a P, did he? And I've seen that like on 10 or 20 reels at this point. Right, same. Whoa, burn. That that works on so many levels. Yeah. Well, okay, that works on two levels. Three. Oh? Here's why. Okay. So essays, so in YouTube speak. All right. As someone who likes to listen to true crime cases, S-A- also stands for something. I wanted to read a little bit of this meme that I found that perfectly describes how I feel. Right. Because I couldn't put it into the words when I was, when we first started this little internet video talk show of ours, Mm -hmm. and I was so shocked that we had to use the word unalived. Yeah, I I remember that. Instead of, you know, the real world terms for what we were describing. And now come to find out kids are using that in hallways of schools. Right, right. Because we can't be adults here. Here's what this meme says, and I love it. I dislike self-censorship terms like unalive because they're cringy. I dislike them because I don't think advertisers should be able to shape how we talk about certain subjects. Survivors of abuse or other traumatic experiences should not have to make up new words because platforms are scared of chasing away advertisers. It's so that younger people can be part of the conversation and also... Should younger people be part of this conversation? Maybe not. Well, I mean, any kid who was watching Bambi on Disney Home Video... Yeah, knows murder. And was like, what happened there? Well, kiddo, sometimes people hunt and... And then, you know, you grow up and you gain some perspective and you see what's going on. Right, right. Yeah. And then you bag yourself a good looking elk. (laughs) Or antelope. Says the guy who couldn't even pull the trigger because it was too sad. Yeah, that's true. And also respect. Yeah. Uh, same. <laughs> that's why we're good co-hosts. <laughs> Agreed, Z's. <laughs> oh, we got a couple more follow-ups. Oh, yeah? Yes. About Chimp Crazy and Chimp Strength. Oh, no. <laughs> in particular. No, it's uh, it's good information to have, I think. Rem- Especially if you're going to be encountering chimps. <laughs> Remember when uh, we were like, is is 13 really chimp adolescence? That's what you said. And I was like, what is it? Because their lifespans are so much shorter. <laughs> right. 40 years as opposed to 80 years. Well, and I just remember seeing the ages when they went crazy. And I was like, that must be bad. <laughs> you know? You were correct. Okay. As usual. <laughs> uh, Aw, it is you. their adolescence <laughs> is about 13 mm, ooh, and, yikes. and particularly about bubbles uh michael jackson's chimp he did surrender it oh. to a wildlife refuge well i mean he about that age uh-huh oh yeah so about when he got aggressive and he was concerned about his safety and the safety of children visiting neverland ranch I went down the whole Michael Jackson yeah. rabbit hole too. And I'm still, I've watched all the documentaries. You want to know something? I'm still not convinced. The very first tabloid magazine that I ever bought was when I was a kid visiting my aunt in Connecticut. I couldn't have been more than eight. And she let you get away with purchasing a tabloid? She, sp- she bought it for me. We've I talked about uncles it. before, but answer that way too. Here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I bought a National Enquirer. That was about Michael Jackson and Neverland Ranch and green underwear. No idea anything else about it. I just remembered those three things. I can't believe she let you read it or buy it. I know, right? Much less read it. Yeah. Well, and also, why did I, as an eight-year-old, see that and be like, I'm interested in knowing what the hell is going on here? Uh So chimps do reach adolescence about 13. Okay. Their lifespans, I think the longest one in captivity is 43 years. Do I have that right? That's from memory, but I do know chimp strength is 1.3 to 1.5 times human strength. Wow. And and they get up to about 100 pounds. Okay. So, you know, I don't know if a 200-pound weightlifter strength trainer dude 
could kick a 100 pound chimp's ass. I don't know. Well, I'm just saying that scientifically speaking, based on the stats that you've given us, one would think that if there's a 100 pound chimp, a 150 pound man could go to toe to toe and they'd be fine. Perhaps, but don't forget about the fangs and don't forget about right. a, another rabbit hole that I, I saw enough of, but didn't go all the way down was, yeah, to your point, I think you're the one that brought this up is chimps don't have this sort of oh, I don't know, prefrontal cortex right. or or, or non-prefrontal like- cortex to pump the brakes on an attack. Right, right. Okay. They are still subhuman. But what we're saying is a chimp and a real big teenager, like a 200 pounder who's like been doing wrestling for a while. He might have a fighting chance is what we're saying. Yeah. I, I don't know if, I mean, is that our next pay-per-view <laughs> event? Would we watch that? That sounds like child and also animal abuse. If we would watch Jake Paul and Mike Tyson go at it. Well, but those are just two real messed we up have enough adults. Bloodlust. <laughs> right. To to watch that? <laughs> Maybe. Some Hunger Games in here? <laughs> I mean, are are we speaking to the dystopian future upon the horizon? <laughs> it's a possibility. Yeah. So anyway, that answers our questions about <laughs> chimps. Yeah. <laughs> and the ones we saw in Chimp Crazy. Terrifying. Also, another follow-up from Brad. Thank you, buddy. Uh, he said, hey, you can book a ride for your teen if you set them up for their own account. Speaking of sending kids to school in an yes. Uber or a Lyft. Okay. Now, I don't know what now, teen for is. Your teen. Is that 13 or is that 18? I don't know. Now, I would say 13 counts as a teen. Certainly it so does. So any number with... A teen at the end is good. We haven't checked their policies. I know you have to be 13, right, to be on Facebook. Is that mm-hmm. right? Anyway, he said, what people usually do is book a ride for themselves and send their teen, which is uh, not allowed. Yeah. And certainly not anything below a teen. It's not allowed. Yeah, right. All right. Well, let's talk about delicious, delicious <laughs> crime that's happening. And either more of it's happening or... Or we're just hearing about it more because we all have pretty established now social media groups, whether it's Facebook groups mm-hmm. or like um, what there's the next door app. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. also the ring app where you yes. form a community. Right. Right. And, and you've got people going, Hey, be on the lookout for this dude. Who's selling vacuums or whatever. Or yeah. whatever. Now I'm assuming that you've seen the Idaho's most wanted or Idaho Falls most wanted list. Yes, the Bonneville County Sheriff's. Yes, it's their top ten. Yes, let's put it up. You know, there's like some felonies on there and stuff. Now I I will say a lot of those are either parole violations or something like that. Um, a lot of them are related to drug violations. Yeah. Okay. Here's another one. Let's put this up. Here's a guy who's been going around ringing doorbells and then attempting entry. Into homes, and he's got this scary thousand yard stare. Oh, ew. Okay. Right. I remember hearing of a serial killer. I can't remember who it was, which makes me feel so dumb because I used to be so good about that. <laughs> Where's your true co- crime cred? Yeah, as were like most teenage <laughs> girls my age. But yeah. anyway, um, basically, his whole thing was he would just turn the doorknob. And if it turned, it was sort of like a... A signal hey. from the universe that these people needed to be killed. Right. I'm sorry, exactly. unalived. <laughs> right, exactly, though. Like, yeah. that was sort of his, like, well, they must not care too much or else they would have locked their door. Right. Yeah. Right. That's kind of scary, right? Yeah, which also, as someone who has a dog and who often has to take that dog out in the middle of the night when I'm half awake, mm-hmm. that feels a little unfair, my dude. Like, I'm sorry that my dog had to take a piss. It does, but I think we're sort of learning safety first, kids. Right. Uh, Kamora Loma, I had lunch with a friend this past week, Ninja Nick, what's up? Uh, Saying that there were three break-ins. They had a little meeting about it and everything. Three break-ins in Kamora Loma. I don't know, kids in ski masks. It's always teenage boys, isn't it? 18 to 25. I hate to profile here. But it always is. We do, we did young an entire bit on it in one of our earlier mm-hmm. episodes. You're right. Young and dumb and full of dumb. Yeah. What else? Uh, some guy tried steal or stole some diesel. And then here's a guy. Bridge Street Saloon posted this. Be aware, Blackfoot Bars. We have another scammer on the prowl because they just had one come through. 
He was in my bar last night, rang, a, rang up a big tab, then acted like he was on his phone. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, the whole, oh, I can't talk right now. I'm on my phone. Yeah, I'll be right back. Right. Right. Which, I mean, honestly, <laughs> brilliant nowadays. Yeah. You pop in your AirPods and pretend to have a conversation. Right, right. Come on. Anyway, left. Here's what I don't get. And and this is the kind of stuff. So somebody posted the picture of the guy with a thousand yard stare. Uh-huh. And one comment under under it from one Walter Matthau, not his real name, probably. And if he identifies with Walter Matthau or is picking that as a name, he's probably also a grumpy old man. <laughs> wrote, oh, wow, Idaho Falls is really going to shit. Yeah, dude, one homeless dude from Nevada makes our whole town going to shit. Right. <laughs> the difference is that now we can actually document it. Right. Here's the thing. As someone who's worked in customer service, the world's been going to shit for a long old time, baby. <laughs> Don't, kids, if you're listening, and you shouldn't be, if you're listening to mommy and daddy listen to this show <laughs> and you're sitting at the top of the stairs and they're having a couple of cocktails. See, I used to hide behind the couch. Okay. If you're yeah. hiding behind the couch right now, kids, I want you to know something. Never listen to old people who say the world's going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> Here's a little secret. Every single generation has been saying that since the dawn of time. Yeah. Or at least the dawn of civilized civilization. The world Great isn't. Great history, baby. <laughs> We're all going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Don't worry about it. And don't listen to old doomsdayers who say it is. Now, that being said, and. don't not worry about it. I actually would say do worry about it so that you don't become that person who's making the world go to hell in a handbasket. Well, right. And that was sort of my uh, point two sidebars ago was, um, <laughs> right. I guess it, it's it's teaching innocent old Idaho Falls and Blackfoot to be a little more cautious. Right. I just, I, I don't get why this particular Bridge Street Saloon, A, didn't, and we're not chucking you under the bus. I'm sorry that happened to you. Frankly, we, I don't get why he didn't pay are. his tab. That broke bitch. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it gets better. Um, but I don't get why they uh, didn't, you know, start a tab mm-hmm. with a credit card. They did, however, have video cameras. Right. And here are the photos. In this day and age, here's where I don't understand why people think they can get away with this. People have already identified right. him and tagged him in this post. Mm-hmm. Here's his personal Facebook page. His bio says, I enjoy being a total menace to my friends and family. Don't hit me up on some bullshit. Well, well apparently, sir, say, you enjoy being a menace to society as well. Right. Now, and I will <laughs> quickly say, allegedly, here's his Facebook page. If this is the same guy, doppelgangers exist, Thank probably. You. Oh, now we don't need the allegedly alarm. Yeah. Allegedly. Oh, there it is, just in case. <laughs> Thank you, Carly. And in the in the digital age, <laughs> you don't think they've got cameras? Who thinks... Right. You little dumb dummy. I just Everyone assume. Everyone has cameras. If I do this, it'll look like I'm picking my nose on some camera yeah. shot. So I'll do it right here and right now. Yeah, you might as well. <laughs> <laughs> Remember right. that Seinfeld episode? Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, hey, criminals, don't be dumb. You know, I've got a friend with, with a small business who she sold a bunch of stuff to this gal uh-huh. who then turned around and called it fraud on her card. And now, in Nuh-uh. order to get her Venmo back, she's got to pay this person's debt. Oh. Yeah. The funny part, she let her take a picture of her to post on the store's Facebook page with her tagged. Wow. Which is so dumb. <sighs> Stupid criminals. Just dumb, dude. Hey, do you want locally raised beef for the holidays or to feed your family through the winter? Oh, word. Right now, Virgin River Land and Cattle Company is offering 25-pound butcher boxes with steaks, roasts, and ground beef. It's crockpot season. Make your favorite pot roast with the four-pound check roast that's included. For your own farm-to-table experience, find Virgin River Land and Cattle Company on Facebook. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first purchase. Selling your home, make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. I help Idaho buy, sell, and invest in real estate. And I'm joined by Carly Morgan to help you even more. You know we have insight on the Idaho Falls community, and we know the current real estate market too. Plus, we're backed and brokered by the best, Keller Williams Realty East Idaho. When it's time to sell your home, make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. Lincoln Post. 
Go thrifting for your new fall looks at Elsie's Closet Upscale Resale. Elsie's Closet is Idaho Falls' only thrift store devoted exclusively to women and women's fashion. Right now, save on fabulous fall fashion, including sweaters, hoodies, cardigans, layering tops, denim, boots, and sneakers. Elsie's Closet. Look for the pink sign just off Yellowstone on A Street. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first purchase. It's not just a stop at the thrift. It's a whole vibe. Did you have family or friends visit Idaho Falls this summer? Send them the best souvenir, a unique homegrown tea from Teton T-shirts. Including these cool vintage versions of the Water Tower, the West Bank, and now the Civic Auditorium. Oh, and that hot shirt we wore to Shelly Spud Days. Check out TetonT-shirts.com, type that right into the URL field, or click the link on this post. These exclusive designs are not available in gift shops. Teton T-shirts. Com. We're a real piece of Idaho Falls. This episode's complete ripoff t-shirt, <laughs> I'm sorry, tribute t-shirt, <laughs> is a, uh, it may represent the last of, I, is it? The last of the four character brand names Whoa. that we've ripped off for IFAF shirts. Do you remember? Does this look vaguely familiar? Vaguely. And I have to assume that there are way more four character brand names soon to come. But yeah, yes, I mean, but that does look vaguely familiar. We've done when, when I hit Victoria's Secret Pink, I was like, okay, we're almost done here. Yeah, right, right. But then I remembered the programming lineup on Friday nights on ABC called TGIF. Uh huh, uh huh. And this is IFAF. Right. Yeah, and TGIF is what you'll be saying four days from now. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, that being said, that reminds me a lot of the soon to home video screen on every VHS. Yes. Yeah. Coming God, soon that. to home video. And Disney DVD. <laughs> All your favorite Disney princesses are here. Jasmine, Ariel, <laughs> Tiana. Yeah, and they were all like shitty, that guy. you know, sequels that like did not have the original voice actors. <laughs> the Return and the of Jafar sucks. Yeah, <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, <laughs> I think the only good one was the um, Aladdin, King of Thieves, or Pr- Prince of Thieves. Okay. That one uh-huh. was actually pretty f- good. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> just saying. It's good to know. Yeah, and actually, Ariel Two was pretty good. Was there an Ariel Two? There was with her daughter Melanie. Because she likes to sing. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. Oh, she looks boy. like Ariel but with black hair. I realized about cash grabs at a very, I think, mature <laughs> age, old age. When I had a son oh. and my partner at the time got him a dollar store grab bag of stuff for Christmas. Okay. Just activities to keep him occupied in a car during I a get trip. It. Yeah. There was a Randy... The Candy Cane Lovin' Reindeer book or something. And I got so pissed off. I was like, there is no Randy. (laughs) There's no Randy the Reindeer. He doesn't love candy canes. You're trying to make another Rudolph. (laughs) Whoever Clement Moore was who wrote The the Night Before Christmas named the eight reindeer. Right. And then later Montgomery Ward added Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Right. Uh And here's some no-talent hack trying to add Randy the candy cane eating reindeer. And I'm like, okay, no, that's where I draw the well, line. Well, and also, there are a lot of reindeer out there. Like, there, there's an entire species of reindeer. And maybe there's one named Randy who likes candy canes. Maybe well, Who are is. you to hate? Who are you to hate? You know, um, one thing we do, I would say a lot on this show, is we discriminate. <laughs> we draw a line. Sure, sure. But... Discrimination as a word has gotten a bad rap. So let me explain <laughs> what that means to our show. Right. It's not Thank you. discrimination discrimination. Yeah. It's not the bad discrimination. We don't hate on any of the protected statuses. No, of course not. Yeah. No, it's, it's illegal and immoral and just plain wrong. And you're right. an asshole if you do. Yeah. What I'm talking about is the the kind of uh, usage of the word discriminate in planes, trains, and automobiles when Steve Martin is ripping John Candy up one side and down the other right. when he says, and not everything is an anecdote. You have to discriminate. Right. Yes. You have to draw a line and put some stuff on this side of the line and go, mm-hmm. nope, that's not for our show. Yep. And then some stuff on the other side. And, and our bar is pretty high, I think. Right. Except for this show. I will say... <laughs> I discriminate against shades of pink. 
I love pink intrinsically in my soul. It is part mm-hmm. of my identity and I only like certain shades. I don't like that gross 2009 paired with zebra print hot pink. That's gross. You don't I like hate the it. LMFAO hot pink? No, I hate it. I think it's gross and nasty. But Carly, Party Rock is in the house tonight. That might be, but it's also not the shade of pink I like. Oh. I like a soft ballet slipper pink. Sort of as is evidenced by yes. this evening's choice of dress. And choice of cup and choice of phone case. Yes. I know. It's almost like I have a preference. <laughs> I get that. And I do discriminate against hot pink. I think hot pink is a gross color and I don't like it. I love it. <laughs> I don't want any more of it. Did you know that over a thousand Idaho kids will attend four day schools this year? Good for them. Something's happening here. What's a novelty confined largely to remote rural schools operating on a tight budget? The four-day calendar has gone mainstream. Yeah. Uh, Three more districts are moving to a four-day schedule this fall. One is in Nampa, the state's fourth largest school district, BT Dubs, with an enrollment exceeding 12,500. Nampa is by far the most urban Idaho district to make the four-day switch. Wow. Okay. What do we think about that, parents? So I've heard a few <laughs> times of a like almost four day switch where it's like if you have grades above this, you can go to mm. school Monday through Thursday and not have to come on Friday. Usually reserved for high schools, mm-hmm. to be fair, because they've got cars and they can drive themselves about. Um, but yeah, I honestly. Or take an Uber. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now, I personally don't hate it. Okay. But that's because I'm kind of a slave to the the statistics you know the thing is that i've seen so many studies that say things like um people only get four hours of work done during an eight hour work day you know yeah like you can only concentrate that long and frankly as someone who's worked an eight ten twelve hour work day i agree that's and that's what terrifies Mm -hmm. me about nurses and Mm -hmm. sometimes doctors is you're working a 16 hour shift right and you're in charge of my life yeah. What? It makes no sense. No. But But let's talk about the statistics. This is, so it's a popular trend, obviously, mm-hmm. but there's also some unknowns. The research into four-day schools is spotty. Some data points to a slight but incremental drop-off in achievement, which worsens over time. There is one point of consensus. A four-day schedule doesn't save a lot of money. Oh, interesting. So that's interesting. Sorry, I had a lozenge in my mouth and said interesting. Oh, yeah. Instead of interesting. I hope you're not getting my cold. I kind of am. I just feel like I'm coming off of last episode's I feel like cold. I've been dripping all day. <laughs> uh, but none none of this has stopped districts and charters from making the move and hurtling past a point of no return. And that's where I think my concern is, is once you go to the four-day school week, if it doesn't work, it's going to be like pulling teeth. To get back. To get back to the five-day school week, right? Right, right. That's parents are going to be all up in arms. Kids are going to be all up in arms. Teachers. But will parents be? Because at the end of the day, that's one less day of daycare that they have to pay for. Well, I have a specific set of circumstances under which parents might be not okay with that. Tell me. <laughs> Here's a guy. Here's a guy. Okay, first let's take a let's let's think about the parents and how they they might be working from home at this point. Post COVID, and we're not even going to dive into, but we'll mention quickly in saying that we're not going to dive into the hypocrisy of the American employer that says, oh, no, you can never work from home. And then COVID hits and they find a way to make it work. Right. And now, everybody, here's two headlines Wall Street Journal, the work from home free for all is coming to an end with Amazon's CEO, Jeff Bezos, just calling everybody back to the office. Free full-time. for all? <laughs> sure, right. Okay. Right. You kids have had enough playtime. As if I hadn't been working from home even when I wasn't working from home, but okay. Well, and now and now some countries are sort of not the US, of course, in late stage mm. capitalism. Woo. Um, but some countries are pushing back with the whole you can't contact employees outside of work hours. Yes, thing. I've heard like, of that. It's becoming right illegal. To disconnect. Yeah, let's mm-hmm. let's work on that. And then a headline from Fast Company, hybrid work boosts productivity and reduces isolation. Researchers say Mm -hmm. balancing both office and remote work presents the most promising path forward. Sure. So let's think about these parents. Here's something I didn't think of, but I saw a guy post from LinkedIn. 
One thing I never see discussed in the remote versus office debate is the ability to have sex with my wife, who also works during the day from home. It's much easier while the kids are at school and a huge boon for my productivity. Yeah. <laughs> he I says, know that not there... sure how to explain that one to my boss. <laughs> okay, but that's the thing. I know that there are a few activities that can get people feeling pumped up and ready to go. And I have to assume that the endorphins released during such an act mm -hmm. would also help the workday. Well, and I know, when, right, right, yeah. very well said. I know a few people who, if they work at the office and they get an hour lunch, they'll go take the full hour. But if they're working from home, they go into the kitchen, make themselves mm -hmm. a sandwich. And, you know, what the hell else are they going to do? Right. So they just go back to their workstation, eat and work. I will say, the endorphins released when I eat some potatoes with the <laughs> sour cream, butter, and and salt, uh -huh. also very effective and make me a better worker. Mm. You know? Eventually, I'll get fat, but until then, I'm very productive. You're and, welcome. <laughs> and I want to make a prediction, too, just a sidebar. I wonder how many potato farmers are going to, if we have an early frost, watch for this this year. It could happen. It might not. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the harvest just happens and it is what it is. Right. But um, will they say, hey, come and glean our fields because they're all going to freeze overnight if you don't? Right. I thought, did I see one last week? Did you? Yeah, I don't know. But if I've done it once before. you saw one before. last week and didn't tell me, then you are a rat bastard. Have you ever gone gleaning before? It's, no, I've never even heard of it. It's kind of fun. I should know because like, I love potatoes and I know a lot of farmers. Yeah. But like. Sometimes their machines leave a few stragglers. Okay. And you can just go and blink, 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 take a 10 pound bag home. <laughs> really? Yeah. Now I've heard of Ontario Roadkill, which is kind of similar. Is that the same as Roadkill Cuisine that we've touched on the last couple episodes? It's more of a little accoutrement to your roadkill cuisine. Okay. Apparently, right now in Ontario, Washington, is onion harvesting season. Oh. And when they load them on the trucks near Walla Walla, Washington. Exactly, and also the border of Red the border of Idaho. Uh, sometimes when they're on the trucks, the onions will roll off because they're around, and that's what they do. <laughs> and so, if you're driving down the highway, you might see some onions sitting on the side of the highway. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that onions are round? <laughs> I am. It's okay. not Minecraft. And, onions and, are round. <laughs> and, and you can go and glean them? You can go and glean them. Okay. I'm just saying that you could have a really nice evening if you went to Ontario, you picked up a couple of onions, and then you drove all the way back to Idaho Falls, and you gleaned a few potatoes, and then you made yourself a nice stew. Uh, and maybe on the way, run into a deer in Washington... Yeah. And you've got a full meal. Is Washington one of the states? I think that they're lets a roadkill state. Yeah. Okay, good. I think good you for mentioned them, them last there we episode. Go. Okay. That's the move then. All right. <laughs> and pick up some weed while you're at it. <laughs> right, right. I mean, realistically, <laughs> if you're on that, then anything will taste good. <laughs> Did you hear about that crazy incident at Grand Teton Mall? Oh, the one where uh, there was apparently an attempted kidnapping. Someone was trying to take a baby out of a stroller and they, like, Security didn't do anything. Yeah. And then the lady who posted it right was surprised that the Allegedly, Grand at least. Allegedly. <laughs> and then surprised that the Grand Teton Mall didn't have security cameras. I mean, I... You know what? As someone who doesn't work there, but who has in the past, I know that when I was working there, they didn't have shit. The stores individually can choose to have security cameras. They can choose to, but most of them don't. But inside the mall itself, and I think in the exterior, they don't. And I shared her outrage. When I read that, I was like, yeah, get with the times. Right. But then also I had this other thought, which is, it's a stark reminder that Idaho Falls, Idaho is still behind the times in some aspects. Well, and realistically. What mall doesn't have security cameras? Come on. Right. Well, and also, if I, a citizen, can go on Amazon and buy two cameras, four cameras for 30 bucks, mm -hmm. which I totally can, by the way. Yeah, HD now. Why can't y'all? And yeah, we alluded earlier in the episode to outsiders coming here to East Idaho 
And we, as East Idahoans, have to adjust. Right, right. Right? Like, okay, this is happening now. Well, I guess we better up our security, but... Well, and I will say, too, also, even just people who live here being more, you know... um, What's the word I'm looking for? Getting ideas from cable TV and rock music. And internet. Yeah, basically <laughs> yeah. being exposed to. That's sort of exposed to the internet. Like, yeah, eventually people are going to get ideas. You know, they see people right. in big cities doing these things and they're like, oh, I can do that in my teeny tiny town. <laughs> when when you have a population base of 10, right. things are pretty much kept in line. Mm-hmm. When you have a population base of a million, things can kind of get crazy. It's a little hard to keep track of, folks. We're moving from 10 to a million. Right. Eventually. It's going to be a while. But yes, these are growing pains that we're having. Right. And I do think that it's cool that we're becoming more and more cosmopolitan. Oh, I agree. But we definitely need secure. I mean, in this day and age, like most of England, and this sounded like a scary concept at first, is under CCTV, closed circuit television. Uh, I mean, I think that's pretty common, though. Right. I almost think in this day and age, we need that kind of stuff. Well, and also, like, if you, an individual, choose to have cameras in your location, whether it's your house or your business, like, that means that that entire area is probably under CCTV, whether it's inside your home or outside, pointing to the street, like, that's something. Also, speaking of safety, a major change to the Ammon Holiday Light Palooza this year. Oh. For safety reasons. Sunglasses? No. Around the country in parades is terrible to think about. There have been many children injured, some fatally, by parade floats in all of the excitement. So Ammon has actually come up with what I feel is a great idea. Uh-huh. Um, the light parade floats will be stationary at the park on Southwick Street the entire evening. Okay. So instead of having floats float by. I mean, kind of like what we did for the And run over July. a kid. Yeah, right? Where we just went out and we walked around them. Remember when we walked the entire parade route in the queue Yeah. before the parade happened mm-hmm. to show everybody what was going to be on the parade right, route? Right, right. Ammon is kind of doing the same thing. The floats can hand out candy and treats. The community can get up close and vote for their favorites. Okay, fair, fair. Great idea, City of Ammon. Well, and also, we've been doing parades for a hot minute now mm-hmm. in history, why is it only just now becoming a problem? Well, I think that um, we're more concerned with safety now. I don't, I mean, what I, I mean, when I grew up, I didn't well. wear seat belts, belts, and my grandpa was smoking in the front seat. You fair, know? fair. Well, yeah. and also back in the day, kids were trim- chimney sweeps and would die all the time <laughs> from like <laughs> inhaling coal into their lungs. Please, sir, uh, may I have some more? Okay, yeah. So maybe they just didn't care about kids' deaths right. back in the day. Now I think we're caring more. That's progress, yeah, that baby. That's progress. Yeah, we actually give a shit about kids. Yeah. I agree. So thank you, Lane, for pointing this out. Hashtag Idaho Mom Talk. Oh, no. Let's play the video. We have to. Right. <laughs> Gag. Cringe. Is it over yet? Okay. Yeah, Mike, you're being so harsh. I just. Here's some lovely young ladies who are having a good time. Hey, listen. No, no, no. We are not going to shame young women for having fun. We're not. However. We're not going to address the fact that they're dancing around in. What apparently is Idaho chic, which is sweatpants and hoodies. No, no, no. Oh, but they're embroidered, Mike. Yes. To an 18-year-old song, Justin Timberlake, Sexy Back. (laughs) Now, Mike, you didn't let me finish my point. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Carl. We are not going to shame young women having fun. What we are going to shame is young women making bad fashion choices, choosing old songs, and choosing to emulate people that are really not that important or impressive. Exactly. Hey, you want to be unimpressive? Then be an also-ran. Emulate people who aren't very impressive to begin with. Because right. every, t- every time I see a TikToker use the Idaho mom talk hashtag, they're also using the secret lives of Mormon wives, wives hashtag, which means they're trying to ride on the coattails of something that shouldn't have been done in the first place. Listen, I get trying to hop on the bandwagon and trying to get some views. Yeah, your bandwagon ears. Hey, hear me out. Congratulations. Okay, but hear me out. Sometimes you got to hop on the trends to get into the algorithm, and that's fair and fine. And also, <sighs> and also... 
once you get into the algorithm, what do you have to contribute? Because if you're not right. contributing anything of value, then you're going to look real dumb. You know, if you get onto the algorithm and then all of your videos are these, like, sad TikTok dances with no real, like, meat to them. And that's how why they are look you here? <laughs> to me now. They look sad. They look, I'm not, I'm not going to say dumb. No, but they, it really looks pathetic. I mean, unless you know about some sort of sloppy mom core that I'm not aware of yet, <laughs> unless I'm not finely tuned into right. some sort of sensibility and alternate reality where sweatpants are attractive. I'm sorry. Do you not remember velour tracksuits? <laughs> Honestly, maybe that's, way better looking than these. Maybe that's what's happening. What it looks like to me is that they went to Walmart. They picked up a couple of sets of Hanes. Yeah. Hanes men's sweatsuits and they were like let's just get them embroidered they'll be so cute we'll like fold them girl girl listen <laughs> I get that blousing can be a great technique to add volume where there isn't any but honey it can only do so much or stir up some shit yeah sleep with everybody's husbands you know do it right like the Utahns yeah let's do a little <laughs> soft swinging I'm kidding Who doesn't like it Kidding. Well, also, soft swinging is really just making out, right? I think so. I mean, maybe some hand stuff. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. Could you're, be worse. <laughs> you're asking me could questions like I know. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm just trying to plant a thought in their heads. Mike. All right. Let's be positive. <laughs> we hope you, your hashtag Idaho mom, your second rate copycat monkey see monkey do hashtag does well ladies maybe they didn't have time to come up with a better dance because they were too busy actually taking care of their kids unlike the folks on the tv show oh zing who actually admitted to having nannies yeah they deserve that the mom talk crew deserves that <laughs> right yeah. well, and also weird that they're in what looks like an actual studio like does someone's mom own a dance studio? Uh, but they've, they've done a couple in the backyard too. Yeah. It just, but it, I, I will say this uh, this is a positive spin. It looks very Idahoan. Yes. In that they're using an 18 year old song in sweatpants, <laughs> dancing in a backyard that looks like any middle class neighborhood. Well, and how efficient that it seems like they did several TikToks on one night that they released right. for a few weeks. Yeah. Good for them. Okay, guys, Smart. we're going to spend 30 minutes mm -hmm. and then we'll have five TikToks by the end of this. Right. Somebody's the cheer captain there. Who's the Whitney? Who's the Taylor? We just got the final score of the Emotion Bowl. Oh, yeah? Skyline 47, Idaho Falls High School, zero. It's almost like the Secret Lives of Mormon Wives crew is Skyline, <laughs> and uh -huh. the hashtag Idaho Mom Talk crew is IFHS. Okay, but listen. Did you even try? But listen, here in Idaho, specifically Idaho Falls, <laughs> the ceilings are caving in. Uh, they yeah. don't have time to choreograph their dances perfectly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Let's talk about this real quick. Uh -huh. There was a news article in July, a couple months ago, talking about how there was a sewage spill on Sunnyside. I remember that one. Do you remember that Apparently one? Apparently it smelled real bad. <laughs> real bad. And yeah. city officials said, oh, don't worry. It was treated sewage. It wasn't like raw. Okay. That makes me feel better. I wonder if that's why folks have been getting sick a lot lately. <laughs> You know, we, yeah. we learned a couple hundred years ago that separating ourselves from excrement right. led to longer lifespans. Mm -hmm. Pretty basic concept. Yeah. Soap and hot water works wonders. Okay. That's the story we know. Here, that, that was in the news, and that's verifiable. Yeah. Oh. Here's the rumor. Oh, do you need that? No. Nope. Okay. The rumor is that Ammon was sending our raw sewage to Shelly for processing. And then Shelly would put it in trucks and we'd take it all the way up Sunnyside or 49th or whatever and find a field and dump it. That Because the question is, why was there a truck carrying treated sewage on Sunnyside in the first place? Good point. Right? Man. That whole thing just sounds like a really shitty job. Hey, did you just? <laughs> I did. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We're going to, no, there's um, nothing, there's yeah, nothing no. more to go ahead with other than we want to say it first and somebody ought to do a little investigation there. Apparently, Shelly needs to um, increase their capability to deal with sewage 
and it's going to take like five years to build the new facility. Okay. And so that's why we're doing this now. But is this really happening? I don't want to start any dirty rumors. Do they have too many folks on septic tanks or something? But like they don't have enough raw sewage themselves? Truth to every rumor, right? I have. I mean, they just had sweat days. Was that just a ploy yeah. to get more porta johns in there so that they could get more raw sewage? Maybe. I just know that if that's true, that's weird, right? Real weird. Okay, next. And and this is where we get... Uh, so that was a little conspiracy theory <laughs> okay. Here's where we get really conspiracy theory, because it's mine and mine alone. I'll take full credit for it if I'm <laughs> right, and I will go down in flames if I'm wrong. Okay, good. Lately, I've seen posts in both... So I lived in Salt Lake for seven years. Right. Spent most of my time in Idaho. So I have friends in Idaho and Utah, especially. And I've been seeing posts like, hey, did you hear those loud booms? People are hearing loud booms more. And you know how there's like, uh, Bill Gates is putting microchips in the chemtrails and stuff. <laughs> right, right. This isn't quite that, but I have a theory about these loud booms, Carly. Me too, and? And what's yours? Uh, mine is You go that- first. Is that it's late summer and folks are trying to hang on to it as long as they can. And they've got all these fireworks left over from the 4th of July. Around here, that could be. And they're just having a good old time. That could be. Now what's yours? Uh, So I guess in September near Tooele, Utah, September 19th, I want to say, there were some loud booms that were heard. Here's my theory. I think that maybe those are sonic booms. And there's some experimental Mm -hmm. aircraft... Remember some UFOs. I'm just saying, or UAEs. Uh huh. I'm just saying that if you're leaving Area 51 in an experimental UAE going Mach 10 or whatever they can do, mm-hmm. uh, you know, flying over a little bit of Utah and a little bit of Idaho, yeah, could be just a rounding error for a sortie of that nature. Sure. I mean, remember the first person to spot a UFO after Roswell was an Idaho pilot flying by Mount Rainier. We covered that in a previous episode. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, that's my theory. I'm going to throw it out there right now, and time will tell if I'm right. Interesting. I dig it. Because it's such a mystery. And I saw some in on the Idaho pages lately going, hey, what was that boom? Did anybody hear that boom? Oh, I think I know what those booms are. Aliens. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> Thank you, George Sukalos. <laughs> All right. The Blackfoot group was lit this past week. Really? It yeah, really it was. sounds like it. Somebody posted these ornaments from Walmart in Blackfoot. Take a good look. You're going to see like Cool Ranch and Nacho Cheese Doritos ornaments. I mean, who doesn't like those, though? Ego, Hostess Donuts, Spam, Popsicle Bomb Pops. I will say I was a little surprised to not see a Mr. Hanky ornament. <laughs> I mean, that would be you know? South Park licensed merch. Well, yeah, but just saying. But but just a lot of common, everyday, but you could say pop culture items. French's mm-hmm. Yellow Mustard. I think there was a Mountain Dew up in there. Mountain Dew cans. I mean, I can think Coors of people. Coors Light. Here's the thing. There are definitely people who, when I think about and do, I think of them. Okay. You know, it's sort of a nice yes. representative ornament. There are two people in my life. Right. That I know I would I would get that and they would be thrilled to receive it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Skittles, Snickers, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. First of all, Andy Warhol said, art is a man's name. Mm-hmm. Remember, he's the famous guy. Uh, yeah, he did the Campbell soup can. Exactly. He turned everyday mm-hmm. ordinary items into pop art. Yeah. And... This totally seems like a 2024 pop art Christmas tree that you could put together. Right, right. The only thing is, they I'm sure Walmart, I mean, maybe they just went to all their top brands. Are these the top brands we're saying? We always say play the hits. Mm -hmm. Certainly Walmart, before selling ornaments, went, what do we sell the most of? Vlasic pickles? Okay, let's make it an ornament. And really, here's the thing. All you need is a little bit of uh, resin. Because then you can just go do your normal grocery shopping. Right. Why not just get the real thing and yeah. coat it with resin? <laughs> yeah, and hang coat it, it on with your plastic. <laughs> UV light that stuff and then hang it on your tree, babes. I love it. Who's going to stop you? The question is not who will let you, but who will stop you. Thank you, Ayn Rand. 
Oh, one more thing. I can't believe we almost forgot. Oh, yeah? We have for you the secret to growing a very large pumpkin. Is it lots of manure? Let's, uh, I'm sure that it's miracle grow, all that stuff. But there's one important thing that I never knew before watching this video. Let's watch. Mm hmm. Got it up on my phone here. Okay, the greenhouse is on the way. Hot? This guy's got a huge pumpkin. He's assembling a tripod. How big is it? <laughs> We're going to find out. That's what he's doing is he's uh, getting it ready to, to weigh. Oh, to weigh it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Building a tripod over it. Got to get the chain. Just watching it on my phone here. Raising the tripod. Cutting the main vine, so he's fully committing. Which, like, you like, why would you not want to try to get it to grow more? I mean, I guess he thinks it's done. He's got to zero the yes. scale, so he's putting the straps underneath it so that he can hoist it and weigh it. Okay. And then what? Re oh. Removing the caulk. First, first, let's let this video resolve. He's hoisting it off the ground. Okay, there it is. It weighs 1,837 pounds. Wow. wow. That's a lot. That is a lot. Um, and also removed what? Can we talk about the caulk? Uh-huh. I'm really trying to enunciate that word. That L right up in there? So, um, of course, I had to go straight to the comments <laughs> and discover that a very important part of growing a very large pumpkin is you got to put some caulk in the butt end of the pumpkin. Otherwise, it'll split, Carly. Did you know that? Oh, I assumed it was the insects would get in there. Maybe so. Okay, interesting. You certainly don't want any foreign matter going no, into the yeah, butt end gross. of the pumpkin. Yeah. So what you got to do... nothing without a flared base. Right. Yeah. You got to stuff a cock in that butt. Yeah, got to stuff some caulk in that butt. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I couldn't do it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> well, you know, with chalk, you don't pronounce the L either. So one right. could say cock, mm -hmm. you wouldn't pronounce the L in either. You've got so. to make sure that that cock is all the way up in that butt. Interesting. Okay. And, and that's the secret for growing a really big pumpkin. <laughs> Which reminds me of the guy here in town who's got a couple of pumpkins in his yard. Yes, Justin Duke from Idaho Falls has grown a giant pumpkin weighing over 1,300 pounds. Way to okay, go, buddy. Okay, okay. So he and this other guy in the video could be buddies. Yeah, he plans yeah. to take it to the Center Street Pumpkin Festival in Logan, Utah. Good for him. And hopes to break the state record next year. Does he need to take the cock? Out of the butt first. I, I imagine he probably had to remove the caulk from his butt too. Now, I would think that it would be more efficient to use black caulk because <laughs> then you can see it better. Okay. I said caulk. I'm not yes. what you mean. White, black, clear. There, I imagine yeah, one the, of those. Yeah, the color doesn't. Why not use orange? One would think. Well, yeah. that'd be hard to because you couldn't see it from the. Pumpkin? It'd be that'd be a hard cock to use yeah. in the butt. Yeah, it'd be hard to differentiate. Yeah. You'd yeah. almost have to like grind up an oompa loompa to make that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like And sing the song too. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like um Oompa Loompa Doompa D Pumpkin. <laughs> what do you do if you need caulk in your pumpkin? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't rhyme with plumpkin. That's great. But how do you feel with some caulk in your butt? Does it make you feel like a really big slut? <laughs> uh, you know, here's the thing. I think I started out pretty wholesome and really not. <laughs> That's our show. Hope you have a great week. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. There's a convenient link in the post right there. So, toodaloo, dude. Bye. Stay fresh, cheese bags. <laughs>